My name is Al Ultra Porter. I'm 72 years old and I've been doing ultras since 1979. I just celebrated 40 years of doing ultras. If you do it the right way, you go, you just up the distance when you increase the challenge and the interest that you have in running ultras. So the next race I wanted to do was a 50 mile race. And what happened was I was registered in a 50 mile race in Lake Warmoke in Connecticut, a very popular and prestigious race. And I, uh, a week before the race, I sprained my ankle playing softball, running to first base on a, on a dirt field, and I sprained my ankle, so I said, there's no way I'm gonna heal that fast to try a 50 mile race. And it's a very difficult course. Very hilly, anyway. So I had to skip it. There was another 50 mile race I was entered in, in Manhattan, in Central Park. And uh, this is early 80s. This is early 80s, yeah. And I was in my, I brought my car, I had a good spot, and I'm waiting in the car, and I'm listening to the weather forecast, and it's currently raining at that time. And then I real, and I had already picked up my number at the Church of Heavenly Rest on 90th Street, where they had the old uh, International Running Center, where, they, uh, where you pick up your numbers on 89th Street. Also, here's 89th, where we are. So, uh, anyway, I already picked up my number. They had it at the church, and people were waiting inside and resting out of the rain. But I saw that it was raining, and then I hear on the radio, rain all day. So I just said, you know what? I don't want to run 50 miles of rain. So I just went, drove home. I went home, I had breakfast with my ex-wife at that time. I mean, my present wife at the time. And I just felt sick after eating. I just, because my body was partially ready to run 50 miles, rain or no rain. So I jumped it. But the following year, I finally went in that metropolitan 50 mile race and I finished it. And that was an accomplishment in eight hours and eight minutes. And someone that was finishing, I was walking the last few miles, someone that was finishing, when I was coming close to the finish line, he talked me into running. And because he talked me into running at the end, someone that he worked with was taking a picture of us finishing the race. We had our arms together and he took a picture and they gave me a copy of it. So you could see the time. And also in that picture, believe it or not, both of my feet are off the ground. So that was another amazing picture that I got in a, uh, that was, you know, good timing that even though I was walking and finishing, all right, so now I was looking for my next race was a 100 kilometer race, 62.14 miles. And that one I did in Prospect Park in Brooklyn. And since I'm a member of Prospect Park Track Club uh, and have been for quite a while, 35 out of those 40 years that I've been running. And what happened is, I was trying to break 10 hours, but someone that had originally got me into running came and met me. He was my coach. And prior to that race, he asked me, what can I bring you if, you know, that you might be able to use in the race? I said, well, bring me a bagel. So he met me and it's near the end of the race, about an hour and, a half, uh, and change left. And he gave me a bagel. So I'm eating the bagel and now I can't run because my stomach is bothering me. So I learned the lesson there that you, you have to be careful of what you eat when you're running these races. Normally I just, you know, did not eat anything and just drank Gatorade and that type of water, Coke maybe a little bit here and there. In the area where they have the six day, 10 day Sri Chimnoy races nowadays, okay? And at, their races are in May, this race was in June. But they start at night, and it, you it run through not, the night. It was not a Shishin Way race. No, it was a hundred mile race. Now, I was able to, and my coach met me, 
and walked the last 14 miles with me. And I finished. I was the last finisher. You won. 22 hours and 51 minutes. The beautiful part about that was I had to notify the times to correct their, the listings of the finishers for the race because they only showed the first, the first nine or 10. I think I finished 11th or 12th. And a woman also finished a little ahead of me and they needed, I gave them the Times her information, they excluded her results also, and then they wrote it in a few days later in the Times. Uh, so that gave me some credibility. Now, in, the, uh, in that race, that was the last year that they had that 100 mile race in Flushing Meadow, around Meadow Lake, two and a quarter miles, 44 times. Okay, so I'm the last finish, the last person that ever ran 100 miles in Flushing Meadow. It's a funny little anecdote because being last, and you know, it's funny how uh, the apostles were telling Jesus, who's, you know, who's going to be first amongst us 12 of the 12 apostles? He says, whoever will be first will be last, and whoever's last will be first, based on who is the best of serves the Lord the best. It goes by the service, not who's the smartest. Okay. Anyway, so I finished last, but I feel that it's noteworthy because no one else has, they've switched it to Shea Stadium, the 100 mile race for about five or six years. And they had the best runners in the world. And also Don Ritchie, by the way, it's another great, I got his book, by the way, my wife got a really uh, good deal on Amazon. Anyway, uh, I read that book. He had it detailed, what a beautiful log that he wrote, what his nourishment was for races, how close they were, but he had passed away, so they printed out his book. They have on the in indoor part of the, uh, it's indoors, the uh, La Rochelle, even though, uh, and they were putting on different events while we were running, you know, all each day. Some, there was a modeling show, they had a wood cutting, they had bicycles and motor scooters, you know, they set up ramps to go over the runners, like the way they built it up. It was like an indoor stadium and it was beautiful. Uh, and, and they also had food on the inside that they were serving, you know, and that drove me crazy, the barbecue smell of food, uh, and especially meat, because I wasn't eating meat at that time either. That was in 1985. How many miles so, did you do in those six days? I did 501 miles, so... Uh, do you remember what your splits were? Uh, well, you know what? The first two days, like I said, I'm pretty good for 48 hours. So I said, if I can do 200 miles for the first 48, all I have to do is average 75, for the next four days. So that's what I did, 201 miles, I think, for the first two days, and felt okay. I did have some knee pain, and they, I had the, the best massage. They had tremendous massage workers there, and medical, they had excellent medical. And the food, everything was, you know, it, they did, the, they had records there, the set, world records, you know. Uh, so that was just one of the things, you know, to do, that was a, uh, like a barrier, you know, like a three hour barrier for the marathon, which I did once, uh, officially, okay, and, uh, and now it was 500 miles for six days, and I accomplished that, and, you know, even though I was a little bit dehydrated and lost a lot of, some weight, I was still alive and well. In fact, the hardest thing was after that race, I had to carry all my sweaty clothes that I used during the race in a backpack and carry it home on it with the train's help, of course. Instead of taking a cab once I got to outside of Paris where my sister lived, I took the trains. My sister said, oh, you should have taken a cab. Because the trains, you had to go up and down to change trains to get the right. And I had to carry this stuff. Anyway, I survived and 
And believe it or not. Did you win that? No, I came in fourth. In that one? Wow. Fourth. Yeah. Trishel came in third in that one. In fact, we, you know, there was a lot of camaraderie. There was a lot of Americans there as well as. Was Emil in that race? Emil Marahara? Oh, yeah, he was there. He kind of petered out a little bit. It wasn't his day. You know, his race, of, you know, that day. When did you first meet Emil? Hmm, that's a good question. I, I might have met him at uh, some one of the sweet chimney races in New York. Uh, I'm sure I've seen him a few times. Anyway. What was your first impression of Emil? That he was very strange, and he was a meat eater. Uh, even though he, what do you call it, uh, he got some kind of uh, malaria or something uh, when he was traveling in Africa, I think he said. But he still was a tremendous runner. I mean, he was really fit. Yeah, he could always, but he had to sleep, you know? That's, that's like the, uh, the, uh, what do you call it, the, uh, if you're sleeping, I mean, I've been accused of being a sleepwalker. You know, they got Skywalker in uh, Star Trek, or I mean, in uh, Star Wars, excuse me. Uh, someone gave me the uh, nickname Sleepwalker. All right, like I said, I close my eyes, because I memorize the track when I'm walking. When I'm running, I keep my eyes open, okay? <laughs> and you used to do some runs backwards. Oh, that was another one I did, yeah. I was trying to break the record for uh, backwards distance. Uh, and what happened was, my wife was with me, my present wife. She was my marker and make sure that I didn't crash into anyone else and, and vice versa, they didn't crash into me. So she would run and I would run and walk every two laps, okay? And uh, after 12 hours, this was my mistake, I went in for a massage. After I came out, I wasn't the same. You know, in this case, it was too much rest. Remember I said about, you know, once you're in motion, you, it's better to keep going if you can, you know. What's the most you've ever done backwards? That was it, 70 miles. So after I had 48 miles at 12 hours, I came out, I could only do 22 miles. After that, I said so I you did 48 miles in 12, 12 hours, hours backwards. Right, yeah. So then I did another 22 miles, and then I realized, you know what, I'm not going to break the guy's record. I think it was Eves? 81, 83. But you know what they also told me? He did it. His, the, his record was walking. The fact that I was running meant that it wasn't a record because his record was, he did 80 some odd miles walking. Was that Eve's and pole, you know? No, not him. That wasn't him? No, that was someone else. Yeah. I still might try to do that one day. Uh, wow. Walking, though. See if I can perfect walking at a good pace. Why yeah. not? It's not a bad uh, thought. How but many races other... do you think that you did at Trishy Moy? Oh, I did? Oh, God. At least 200. <laughs> 200? I know that's a lot. Uh, uh, maybe approximately. Somewhere in that neighborhood. A lot of races, yeah. But some of them were marathons also, you know, 50Ks and What was the toughest distances. race that you entered over there? But I just want to say one other thing about yeah. that six-day race. Now, Trishel beat me in that race. He did 534, I did 501. He came in third. When we went to do the New York Marathon two weeks later, I beat Trishel, okay? This is the best gift or the best ability that God has given me. Not just to run ultras, but to recover from them. Because recovery, if you don't recover, you can't run another race, you know? I have an expression, people have an expression, you know, you're only as good as your last race. I say you're only as good as your next race. <laughs> That's my expression, all right, on that play. Because if you don't run the next race, you're either dead, you stop running, you stop racing, right? one or the other. But anyway, I can still look forward to my next race, even if it was a few months apart. Like I said, I Do you remember Al Howie? Did you know him? Did you meet him? But I did three hours and five minutes, two, out, two, day, two weeks later, after doing the 500 miles. That's unbelievable. In the New York City? Yeah. It was a hot day as well. Yeah. 305.
and walked away from it because the recovery was there. In fact, two weeks later, after that, I almost won a 50-mile race, came in second, the MAC 50-mile race. Did you, did you know Al Howie? Did you ever meet him? Yes. We, I saw him in the, uh, I was trying to do 700 miles. He was in the 1300. But both of us gave up the gauntlet and we couldn't do it, you know? He what, was what struggling with diabetes at that time. Oh, you know, okay. it was later in his career as well. But uh, he still is a tremendous uh, ultra runner. One of my friends who passed away, Paul, he went up to Canada to run against Al Howie. My friend was really a pretty, an excellent ultra runner also. Uh, Paul Soskin? Paul Soskin. Oh, you heard the name. Good. Yeah. And he came in second to Al Howard in a 24-hour race. That was a great race that he had. Uh, and he pushes himself much more than I push myself. Okay, so, you know, there's a limit of not just miles and races, which is the limit of how much you're going to push yourself like. You know, there's a guy named Alberto Salazar. Mm -hmm. One of the greatest marathoners of the modern era. And he went and trained and he won the Comrades Marathon. Out of nowhere. You know? It's a pretty big upset. Anyway, uh, so... Officially, he's an ultra runner, and so he won you, one of the yeah. most prized yeah. ultra races of our time. It's a big you know, one, modern times. So you didn't right. really so, come into contact with that. But he will push that. himself where he'll get IV treatment at the end. Yeah. He's given himself hypothermia, hyperthermia. You know, I'm, I've never uh, uh, finished a race where I needed IV. Uh, you know what I mean? I thank God I haven't needed medical uh, treatment. Okay. Uh, what, what does running mean to you? Why, why do you do it? So, you know what? The ch this is one of the reasons that I stay and continue to do ultras and challenge myself, if you will. You know, when, we, when we're little kids, when we're growing up, I'm talking like five, six, eight, ten years, we're still growing, physically growing. We always want to be older. Because when we get older, we'll be bigger, hopefully smarter. <laughs> hopefully, it doesn't always go that way. Uh, but, and I thought of that when I started to run ultras, that you know, I'm learning this new sport that not that many people can do, or even want to do. <laughs> it's it's a tra challenge beyond most uh, sporting events, even with the uh, advent now of extreme sports, uh, they go. They're climbing different mountains. They have sky. You, you come out of you. You, you uh, what do they call that? The sky dive. You come out of whatever it's called the, out of a plane. Then when you land, and then they run a, 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 a uh, ultra. They have those kind of. There's all kinds of very strange, but. You can't end the Tour de France. You know, there are endurance events, plenty of them. How tough was but the 1300s? There's nothing that compares to running because it's simply not only putting one foot in front of the other, it's defying gravity. How difficult was that 1300 with an 18 day cutoff? It's like, I couldn't do 700, forget about 1300. I've never done 1000. I don't know if I'm smart not to do it. Yeah. Yeah. So you only saw Al later in his career? Much later, yeah. Yeah, yeah I didn't enter. That was only one uh, 700 that I tried and uh, didn't succeed, you know. So when you saw him, he was in bad shape. Was yeah, he? yeah. It was, you know, after quite a few hundred miles, of course. But he was done. trying to treat his diabetes. You know, he had a, you have to check your glucose level and either rest, eat, you know, and mo you have to monitor. Once you're diabetic and you're diagnosed, it's a, uh, it's a struggle. Did you see him I, vomiting? I don't know. I only know it from my job. Did you see him vomiting or anything on the side of the course? Not really, like no, no, I didn't see him. Uh, did he pull out of that race, do you remember? That, that I just know he, he dropped. I he did? I know, yeah. 
that particular one. But anyway, uh, so I'm, I'm, like I say, I'm still doing these ultras and uh, a race came up in Tennessee, I thought it was a, a, a little wrinkle and, and threw in an idea of handicapping, right? Uh, an event, which it seemed like not a bad idea, it seemed like it would help older people. So as I was getting older, and uh, it, the race entailed a one mile loop in a park in Manchester, Tennessee, that uh, just the race one for the of ages? Our famous, yeah, race for the ages, it's called. Laz. Laz, in other words, Last Gary dinner. Cantrell, who has put on some unusual races, okay, and this was one of the, one of his unusual races, and it caught my attention, and I said, you know, I'll try it out. So when I was 68, I went, and I had 68 hours of running. But the fact that it started at night kind of threw me off. But of course, the people that had that were 86 years old, or eight, in their 80s, they started early in the mornings, because you had to do it by time. And the whole thing was based on everyone finishing at on Labor Day at 12 o'clock in the afternoon. And you had to uh, start at when your age dictated your time of how many hours were left in the race. So uh, I did have struggles and difficulty right off the bat, and uh, I still managed to do 141 miles, and I ran the last mile backwards, by the way, <laughs> with my daughter, who was my uh, handler. My younger daughter. Now she's 22. What's the trick to running backwards? Uh, well, balance and uh, you know, just it's just a uh, an unusual uh, motion of running because we're used to running forward. You know, if you learned how to run backwards when you were two or three years old, you would be the greatest backwards runner. Okay, maybe Eve Poe, who runs backwards often. Might have been that person, I don't know. But I only tried to do that and I ran backwards nine miles before I tried that backwards run. I did a nine mile workout on the boardwalk. I had to be careful not to hit nails. So before you did 148 miles, you had only run nine miles backwards. No, not 148. Uh, 48 in 12 hours. Wow, well, you're and right. And 70 eventually in the next uh, 21 and a half, and that's nine and a half hours. I mean. So running backwards, so you went nine miles. I only did miles. nine miles before that. That's my long backwards run, walk. Run. You went from nine like, miles to 48 miles. Right. So yeah. Did you run uh, with Kuros? Kuros. Yeah, he was running the. Uh, the he was running a hundred mile race. It was a 70 and a hundred. But originally, I wanted to see if I could do a hundred. But since I only got 48 or 12 hours, I don't think that that was going to happen. But that was backwards. Yeah, backwards, right. But uh, it was just a, a challenge. As I was saying about getting older before, so you want to see, you want to be, see how it is when you get older. So now I assimilated that as a child when I was running ultras and I started when I was 30 or 32, technically. I was thinking, well, let me see how it feels like well, by the time you finish 70, 100, 200 miles, maybe you're going to start feeling like you're 80 or 90 years old. But I didn't feel that old. Still felt maybe 60, all right? <laughs> so I, I had that challenge that was in my mind that I want to see how it feels to be old. Of course, it, you know, and then maybe you could make adjustments when you do get to that age because now you felt that age it's kind of like all right i did 50 miles now let's see what i feels like when i do 70 i know what i'll feel like at 50 but maybe at 70 miles i'll feel different what was your impressions not. of course you have to walk more you know the first 50 miles i did i had to walk yeah it took five 50 mile races for me to be able to run the 50 straight the longest I ever ran straight was 84 miles. That race I won. 12 hours, okay? Which race? That was that? a Crocheron 12 hour race in, in uh, 
Queens, not far from the Thoroughs Neck Bridge. It was in Bay, uh, Baychester or Bay? Where did they do it? Oh, God, I forget the name of the neighborhood. But it was an exclusive area, very, you know, a, a well to do uh, social neighborhood, okay? And they had, it, it was like a one mile loop in this park. People were playing softball all day, different male, female kids. There was tennis courts that you passed. You watched them play. And then in a parking lot, ice cream trucks came. Some guys that had money, they bought ice cream during the race. One of the other things I did in that race, I think I had the longest lap, because I fell asleep on a bench for about two and a half hours, one of the races. But one time, and that race was the only race that my parents ever came to together. Both my mother and father were both there. My mother was giving out iced tea for all the runners and fruit. I ate. I love honeydew, cantaloupe, watermelon. That, they fed me that food and that was giving me energy. That was easy to digest, okay? A lot, a lot of it is water. Also, watermelon and special. I just need so, to get your impressions on a couple okay. of runners. And, yeah. uh, All right. Just what, were, what was your, your impressions of uh, Kuros when you, when you saw him? Kuros, he ran like the wind. You, could, you couldn't hear him coming past you. He was so light on his feet. Not that many runners can do that. You, and you can tell not only the, the style that they use when they're in front of you, but when they come from behind, you could hear that some of the plotters, heavy-footed runners, because they were heavy, but they were great runners nonetheless. Ultra runners, the gamut of builds and you know your body build is it varied from very thin to even heavy. You know, some people can do these ultras and they're heavier. They just, that's their, they're used to doing it. You know, they built up and they became efficient at putting in the miles. But some of the other runners, like they were saying, Don Jewel, I don't know if you've ever heard that name, he did a lot of sweet chinoy races. Don Choi? Don Jewel. Don Choi, I helped him. I was his handler when he did Death Valley. I, I drove out there with my wife and we did like a vacation and combination helping Don Choi. He was a thousand mile runner. The guy, he's a great runner. Okay, another multi day One of the great ultra runners of uh, modern times, Don Choi. He ran the first 15 six day races that were out. They, you know, they didn't overlap. 